Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is we're doing three very quick uh, bathtub uh, sequences uh, t this evening with the same. We're at the same martini, the same master bather, and it's the same uh, IBA picture up there. Uh, we're we're doing them all. Over. We're gonna try to do these. I'm trying. To, I keep saying I'm gonna make them quick. I never make them quick. I don't know. I, have to, I, I seem to. I can't shut up. Um, there was something. Oh yes, yeah, so International Bathing Association. We got to remember this is this is a crucial time. We've got huge membership drive, free memberships, lifetime free memberships for you and a bathing buddy. You don't even have to know the bathing buddy. You can make Boris Johnson your bathing buddy. You can make uh, oh, I don't know uh, uh, Farrah Fawcett Majors, even though she's dead, your your bathing buddy. You can do anybody you want. You can make uh, Stephen King your bathing buddy. Anybody you want. Okay. Lifetime free membership, and it entitles you to our enormous perks all over the world. Today we're doing again. I don't. I I, I said this three. These are three of the least uh, positive. I guess the, the two are the least positive pieces I've done. We we normally just do totally positive things. We don't want to tell you not to like anybody. But I have a kind of gimmick for a series of letter le lectures, which is yay or nay or nay or yay. So we take somebody like Kerouac, who I can't stand, and we say nay, and then we say. Uh, uh, Richard Brodigan, yay! You know, I think that was a, that's. I think it's a balance that needs to be redressed. That that's not. It's not fair that Kerouac is famous and Brodigan is considered silly because I think Brodigan is much better. Okay, so ours today is called Stephen King, nay. You know, to go love Stephen King. If you're out there, Stephen King, we all you're a nice guy. I'm sure you're a great guy. You're really talented. I like 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 a lot of stuff of your stuff, but I can't read it. And so nay on Stephen King and yay. Ted Klein. You probably do not know who Ted Klein is. Uh, and I only know about him for a, for a personal reason. Uh, when I was, years and years ago, when I was first writing, one of the first stories I ever wrote that was any good, I need to take a quick break because I'm talking too much, floral pattern martini glass, just like Raymond Chandler, by the way. It's Raymond Chandler. And, and Philip Marlowe was known for drinking out of floral pattern martini glass. Uh, I, I had written a story called Ghost Guest, which I was, I'm still proud of. It was, it was one of the few times I actually knew what I was doing. I write down, I used to write crap all the time, and I sat down for a few months, and I wrote this story. I was really proud of it. No one wanted to publish it. It was impossible to sell to anybody. And I sent it to the slush pile of Twilight Zone magazine in the early 80s. And I didn't know who Ted Klein was, but he was the editor there. And he was the editor for four or five years. It turns out he had, he had Tom Dish as his book, book critic there. So he actually uh, um, knew a lot of things that were going on. I don't know if this, this looks like it's glitching, but if it's glitches, it doesn't matter because I'm not saying anything important. Uh, he was he was the uh, editor at, uh, at, at Twilight Zone. He bought a story of mine, which was quite good. I'm quite proud of. And he wrote me a few times, and then he never bought another story from me, and I never talked to him again. So, But I always had a positive feeling for Ted Klein. It's not Ted Klein. It's T-E-D Klein. And so for years, I always I saw this book came out. It was one of these bestsellers that was designed to look like, you know, Stephen King kind of brought the horror novel back in the big, big triple-decker sized books, really small print and mass market editions with lots of kind of horrifying, you know, cover stuff. And uh, I never could get through a Stephen King book. Sorry, I tried over and over. The last time I read a Stephen King book is I, did, I taught a course, I was doing a, course in re reading for writers out of Kingston University. A lot of great students out there. They're still, are still around. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I taught a class. I just ran a class called You Can Even Learn From Books You Don't Like, Stephen King's The Shining, which I find a really boring book. But the premise was, I don't like The Shining. I find The book Shining boring. And yet he technically, Stephen King's technical technically a really good writer. So I just said, you can, always, you can learn the basics by from a writer, even if you don't like them. Okay, that's a long way to say I can't stand Stephen King. I've said it for millions of years. Sorry, I ne I'll never try reading him again. I've read The Stand years ago. I got a third of the way through it. It was so boring. And Cujo is one of my favorite books to hate. The Shining. Everyone says, well, you'll love The Shining. I hate The Shining. Except the movie. I like the movie. Okay, so there's a real long reason why I kind of wanted to read T.E.D. Klein. And then we did Arthur Mackin. We, st we did the first episode of Arthur Mackin a few months ago, and we're going to do another episode on Arthur Mackin, the great 19th century, early 20th century occult horror writer, auto wrote two wonderful autobiographies, essayist, 
but mainly is famous for right, kind of being a big influence on the Weird Tale and people like Lovecraft, who was a total discovery to me, who I really enjoyed reading. And we're going to talk more about him. And we, 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 we kind of raved about the three imposters. And we're going to do more raving about Mac. Uh, this I picked this up at a secondhand shop. It's actually a hard book to find the original paperback, and uh, but I recommend the old paperback version. It was sort of a semi. It looked like it was a semi bestseller. Klein wrote one novel, this long novel, and several short stories. And from what I learned from Wikipedia, my source, my go-to source, is he doesn't really write very much, and he's got a he he just he 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 likes to procrastinate. But who doesn't like to procrastinate? And he hasn't written very much since. This is interesting for several reasons. One, it's a very kind of complex, interesting, narrative horror novel. And I, as I've said, I don't normally like horror novels, but I enjoyed reading this over the past week. And it's also a play off. It, it makes lots of references to Arthur Mackin, particularly his story, The White People, and the series of ceremonies that are kind of run through that story. But And it also has lots of kind of quotes of Lovecraftian octopus-like creatures getting into the soil and these weird uh, supernatural events coming out in the countryside like in uh, the Colorado space or all those kind of rural horror stories of the Lovecraft. Complicated story, lots of, lots of characters. The central protagonist is a Jewish academic who spends most of the book reading Gothic novels. <laughs> Which, you know, by the way, Gothic novels are really fun to read. So the monk and Melmoth the Wanderer and Dracula, you all know Dracula. So he, he's, he's reading all these books while these kind of complicated, horrific scenes are unfolding around him in the countryside. And for this New Yorker, uh, the countryside itself is pretty horrifying because it's got bugs, it's got snakes. The people out there are really boring. They don't have any decent television. There's no theater. He, if so it's like the horror for a New Yorker anyway. So there's that humor in it, and it's it's a good, genuinely creepy story. And and you have a a kind of evil, menacing character, an old man who's going around setting in motion a series of ceremonies that are going to bring forth this great this great burgeoning of evil and so forth. <clears throat> I won't say any more about it than that. Um, if you like Stephen King or you like complicated kind of horror stories, I think I would recommend this. Um, if uh, I, always, I, I think it's a much more interesting novel than the Stephen King novels I read, or most, uh, most horror novels. I can't think of many horror novels I've enjoyed as much as I enjoyed reading this. And even though I didn't, you know, I didn't I had this history long for many years ago where I, why I picked the book up and it was always in the back of my mind. I thought it was a fun thriller, a fun horror thriller for the summer, maybe for the winter months you can read it, especially if you, especially if you like uh, Lovecraft and especially if you like, and you should learn to like Arthur Mackin. We're going to talk more about Arthur Mackin soon. So Stephen King, nah, uh, Ted Klein, T-E-D Klein, it's T-E-D Klein. Yeah, you should definitely... Uh, you know, don't don't go for the obvious. That's the other point of these. Don't you know, Stephen King stuff's everywhere. You can always read a Stephen King book. Go dig this up somewhere. It's, it, it's probably on Kindle. And if you if you like horror fiction, you like kind of fantastic dark fiction, this is worth trying. Okay, uh, happy bathing, and don't forget join the IBA because you know it's, those free memberships. They're not going to be around forever. Okay. All right. Bye.